His relationship with women was something that he was constantly dealing with in his work. Every woman that he ever loved died either of tuberculosis or in childbirth. And I do think that he struggled with perfection in women. He idealized them. And so while he may not have blamed the woman for literally killing him, there's something about the introduction of a woman that kind of kills a part of his spirit. And I think he does that repeatedly. Well, the National Edgar Allan Poe Theater is a 501c3 organization that is devoted to adapting the works of Edgar Allan Poe for the stage, for radio, and for educational purposes, and soon to expand into other media. Uh, we've just finished our first season of 20 episodes of Poe Theatre on the Air, which is being carried now on uh, the local Baltimore NPR affiliate. One of our most successful shows was Nightfall with Edgar Allan Poe, so when we began thinking about you know, ways to uh, move beyond what we were doing, it seemed very natural to start doing radio dramas, and then we got the support of Raven Beer. Yeah, uh, so that our, was a big piece. Yeah, and then once we got the uh, arrangement with WYPR in Baltimore, everything just started to fall into place. So uh, we've we put out over the course of uh, two years, 20 episodes, monthly episodes, and we did um, Telltale Heart, Black Cat, Morella, Berenice, the list kind of goes on. In The Telltale Heart, we have this domestic who, as we mentioned, we cast as a woman and I played. We were able to also perform that at, on the stage at PoFest. But casting a woman in Telltale, it brings out this idea of what it's like to be, as I said, so, so desperately in love with someone and wanting to help them, but then the very passion that you have for them kind of turns sour when they're not perfect. Perhaps that would explain why he chose such a young bride. Um, she had an innocence that he found very attractive and compelling. But his relationship with women was so tragic because these are all women that he was very close to. Was, you know, going as far back as his you know, foster mother and Virginia Clem. Which then brings up this recurring subtext in Poe about mortality and death. This idea of aging as repellent, when you're young, you believe you'll live forever, and to see someone decay in front of you is kind of an affront. It's detestable, it's frightening. It's controversial having a female play the murderer. A lot of people just seem to feel as though it's, you know, Always, always has to be a man. But when you think about the work that was being done at the time and the work that this person was hired to do. A domestic. It was a domestic yeah. position. There weren't, except for butlers in very large mansions, there weren't all that many women, uh, men doing that type of work. So it seemed natural. So now having done 20 episodes of, of Poe Theater, we have the brand awareness that so we can start working on other avenues. We want to move into the schools for one. I've been working on some original curriculum that addresses suspense and how suspense is communicated through a radio drama. Um, we're trying to enable kids to find ways to unlock Poe to make it exciting. One of the things that we're talking about doing is publishing a book of the collected scripts of the first season that might be an aid in education, as Jennifer yeah. pointed out, uh, but then working on integrating some of those scripts into a stage play and then maybe using that as a script for movies down the road and then, you know, today radio, tomorrow the world.